All right, so um, that last video we had to cover because without conditionals, we can't make decisions. You know, we can't, um, but now we can start the fun stuff. Now we can actually make, um, make our rotate our rod 13 um, into an interactive function and you know and this is where it gets fun because this is how you can actually start to say like oh i can put these few things together in elisp but how can i make it so i can use it in my editing you know within in, and, and again it's just the starts so we'll also learn how to make things happen automatically later on but but anyway so let's get started so i'm going to leave i'm going to get rid of these I don't think we need them as samples. And um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to write, we'll basically, we'll write the function call, we'll call it, um, I'll leave rot13 that we have up there and, and we'll, we'll call that rot13 on, um, uh, on whatever strings we need to, but we'll make this, um, why don't we call this rotate um, interactive. And it's going to, um, we're not going to put anything in the parameters for now, um, but we're going to make it interactive. And I'm just going to have, I'm just going to print hello for the time being. And so if I can do control XE to, um, to basically uh, to, to run that, I now have, I, I can certainly do rotate interactive like we, we did before and control XC it and it prints out hello, it evaluates to hello. But we can also do, because of that interactive, escape X rotate interactive and just run it as a command. And then we can also do uh, key map local set, make it control CZ. And we'll call that to call rotate interactive. Just so we have a keystroke for it. So if I just type now control C Z, it just prints out the hello. Um, and actually let's make it also do control C control Z, just so that I can, you know, that's what I'll probably hit by mistake a few times. And now I'll just make testing things a little bit easier. So the first thing I want to show is, um, okay, what we want to do is we want to be able to, to rotate our text. And, um, but we want to rotate something like we might have like, uh, you know, this is some sample text. And we might want to rotate, let's say, the word text. And there's a really cool, um, you know, like, like that word in our tower, maybe this word sample, or maybe we want to do this entire line. Let's say um, here is a second line of text. So we can use, there is, um, there's a really nice function in uh, Elisp called word at point. So we're going to use the let form I showed the other day. And let's say that our string, we'll call our string S, is going to be word at point. And then we'll just uh, we'll just print S. So we'll come over to here to sample and we'll run control C control Z. Um, shouldn't it be word at point? It should be word at point. Oh, it's the function word at point, right. Um, I have to run the function word at point. And so now if I'm over here and I, and I run my rotate interactive, notice on the bottom it says sample. Uh, if I'm here, it gives me text. If I'm here between them, it gives me sample. And if I'm after text, it gives me text. If I'm here, it gives me nil because there is no word at point. Um, and in fact, I wonder if there's, um, I think there's also a line at point, is there? Let's see. Um, I guess there is not a line at point. I thought there was. Um, there is, however, and let's go back to word at point. Reevaluate that with control X, control E. Um, Control C, Control Z, run it, sample, we're good. We're going to bring up the help on this. So Control H function, 
And if we bring up for word at point, and I'll go over to here and make this a little bit bigger. Um, notice it says word at point is a native compiled list function uh, in thing at pt.el. Um, and we can also give it um, um, if, you know, an option of no properties. Uh, and no properties, we'll get to text properties much later when we see about overlays, like, like how do we get, like you might see this in some programming languages, you type the word lambda, you get the symbol lambda, you know, whatever. Um, so I'm going to click here on thing at point, and we'll see thing at point um, returns different things. And so the different things could be the list at the point, the white space at the point, existing file name. Oh, oh here we can give it lines. So we could actually replace this. Let's do this to thing at point. And the thing we're going to get is going to be a line. So now if we come here and we're going to Z, notice we get this is some sample text. Uh, we get the whole thing at the point, which is a line. And this lets us get all sorts of different things. But we're just going to go back to word at point because that, that'll, uh, sorry, go to the end of the function uh, because that, that'll be fine for us for now. Um, so we can get our word at point. Um, and then we can try to rotate that point. Uh, but you can do all these other things as well. And the other thing you can do here is notice that it's in thing at pt.el. We can actually bring up the code for thing at point or for word at point. And we can start perusing it and see what it does. Notice here we have a con statement, um, CL loop, which is a, you know, I guess a looping structure. Um, yeah, and it, it just has. Anyway, there's all sorts of stuff here. I'm just going to kill this buffer because we don't need it now and just close up to here. Um, but it does let you go through things and then hopefully find some things out. It's the documentation. I don't find it always to be the most um, accessible, but it is there. So anyway, so we can get the thing at the point. And now what we can do is we can... Um, We can basically say, well, now let's do our rotate. Let's say our rotated text. And is, this is not going to quite work yet, but our rotated text is going to be um, rotate. And notice in the bottom it says, um, and actually, I don't want rotate. What do I do want? What do I want? Um, oh, right, current, I think. Is that what I called it? No, let me just scroll up. Um, oh, it's just called rot13 with the string. Um, is that the final one we did? Yes, rot13 with the string. So rot13 and then the string. Now, if I close this off and I run this, if I try to run this, it's going to give me an error. And notice that it gives me value um, variable is void that's messed up and the reason for that is in the let form you can't use something in the let I can't use this s it's void in my let because I defined it in my let it's kind of like you know oh you got to make it before you can use it now fortunately there's another form of let called let star and let star lets you use the things you've defined so now if I run this and if I run this, notice it still prints out sample, but I can print out rotated, let's make it rotated text. So let's evaluate that. And we'll come over to here. And if we do control C, control S, at the very bottom, you'll see the rotated text, um, which is really, really nice. It's exactly what we want. So now what we can do is, um, instead of rotating this text or printing it out, we want to we want to actually replace the text we wrote. So what we're going to do, and this is not perfect, I want to emphasize this. Um, we are, what we're going to do is we're going to go backward word, and we'll go back one word, and well, how did I come up with this? Well, um, I know that all 
B does backwards word. This actually might not be how I found this exactly. Um, and if I'm here in the middle of the word, I do Alt B, it goes to the beginning. So I can do Control H, not a Control H F, but Control H K for help key. And then I type the key and it says, oh, that's the backward word function. So I can backward one word. Then I'm going to, um, after I go backward word, I will kill the word that we're on. And I, did, I found this the same way. I tried it on and I found what the key was. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to insert the rotated text. So basically it's going to be, we'll hit the key, we're going to go back to the beginning, kill it, you know, so it'll basically be, be a, it'll basically be go back to the beginning, kill this, you know, so I'll do the, oops, didn't mean that. Kill word, which is meta D, and then it's going to insert the new text. So let's run this. And now let's see if we're here. <coughs> if I type control C S, it's rotated and I hit it again and it rotates back. So just like that, now we have this interactive function um, that lets us do some pretty cool things. It lets us do our rotations. So I want to show one more thing today, and then we'll move the next to the next video because we're all, I want to keep this relatively short, which is we can also go further. Well, actually, should we do this? Um, yeah, we're at 10 minutes, so why don't we stop this at this one? And what we're going to do in the next one is we're going to see how we can use actual parameters to this. And based on parameters, um, what we'll do is we'll give it different rotations. And the other thing that we'll do either in that video or the one after is we'll do it so we can actually mark a bunch of text and then rotate, well, rotate, like rotate everything that has been marked. Um, I do want to mention that there is a problem with this. This is not perfect. Um, so like if I'm here at the beginning of the word, like if I'm at the beginning of line and I try it, notice that it does the one before, um, not the one that I'm in, whereas if I'm here, it's doing, you know, it, it, it does line, but it erases the one before. And that's because of the way that word, word works. Um, but without getting more involved, I couldn't think of a way of easily seeing to make sure like oh we have to go back we don't have to go back etc but anyway that's it for we now have a useful function you now have all the tools to write a an interactive function where you can get something from your buffer and do something with it etc and we're going to extend this in the next video as i said to deal with parameters and to deal with a region of text all right so that's it for now see you next time